it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to do this in Design Space. It's a sublimation project. We're going to take a sublimation blank and figure out how to design it and then we're going to print it out. So, <laughs> Alright, before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I totally appreciate all the support that I can get. Alright, let's get started. This is Artist Spree's Blink of the Month and the way they uh, do it is every month they have a Blink of the Month and it's only available that month. This month for June, it has happens to be this garden steak. I think it's so cute. I'm hoping that they'll bring it back next year and just be part of their regular lineup. So as soon as I saw this, I knew that I wanted to use my sublimation printer. I was thinking in my head, you know, like lots of pretty colors. And then I wanted to do the, you know, like tomatoes or in this case, basil. And I wanted to be able to see it. So that's always going to be with an offset. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and I used Creative Fabrica to find the image that I liked and then also the font. Um, Creative Fabrica is one of the few subscriptions that I use for crafting. Um, I feel like it's it just makes life so much easier. So I, do, I have Cricut Access and I have Creative Fabrica's monthly membership because the fonts and the images, they come with commercial usage. Um, it's allowed. And then um, I just, there's just so many fonts. And I also end up using Font Cloud, how to manage my fonts there. So, all right. Uh, the link is in my description if you want to try it out. I do have a dollar trial trial period so you know just test it out i absolutely love it i've been with them for years now okay so this shape is a little bit wonky right it's going to be hard to duplicate it i mean we could make sure but the way i look at this is i put it down and it's basically a rectangle it's four inches by three inches and so I'm good with that I'm good with it going over I know that I want it to be centered where we're gonna have the name the word and so you know for all intents and purposes I think we can use this as a rectangle four by three and then if we want to measure this um, I'm going to you know not do this little tip part but from about here to here it's three inches so I know I have that and it's 0.75 inches so a three quarters of an inch um, for the the width okay so let's do this I just wanted to show you this first but also I mean look at the colors I you know it's one of the reasons why I love sublimation so much is all the details that you can get I mean I think this is I just I love it it's gorgeous <laughs> all right let's make this smaller and I'm gonna share my screen so you can see what we're doing here I'm gonna flip the camera. All right, so let me make myself smaller. Okay, so I don't, I'll, I'll show you how I, you know, found this, but um, basically once you find something that you like, so in this case, it's a wildflower PNG, you just download it. Um, and I'll download it again so I can show you what that looks like. Um, this is because I have the membership, it says download. If you don't have the membership, it'll tell you how much it is per down, per, image, font, whatever it is that you want to purchase, and you purchase just like any other um, e-commerce site. Okay, so once you have this, and I used both the font and the wildflower, so let's go, and I, I want to show you just really quickly the font. So I will usually just click on fonts and start looking. I will say like the first, um, the first few, I just, there's always something that I like here, but um, I'll go into script fonts. You can break it down and you could just see, look at all of the pretty, pretty fonts. I feel like within a design space, it's too hard to, to search in there for the fonts. And I don't believe they have all the fonts that I like. Like, I mean, it's just, it gives you su such a good idea of what you can do with your fonts. So let me show you another one. Um, so I just go by categories and I start looking through and, you know, do I want a sweatshirt? Do I, you know, what am I looking for? And then I use font cloud to find things as well. Okay. So once you like a font, like for instance, I, I kind of had this on my mind. I saw it earlier. So I'm just going to download that one too. And I'll show you how to upload it into design space. So first thing is we need to close out of design space. So I'm just gonna save this. We'll come back to this project in a minute. And let's go and work out everything. So I'm gonna show in folder. 
because it's a zip file and you can see I've been busy downloading today. <laughs> All right, so within this one, I go to OTF, the open type font, and I just double click on it and install. So the reason why you have to close out of Cricut's design space is that anytime that you install, it will not be available until you close out and reopen it. So that's why I closed it out. All right, so we've got this installed. Then what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I'm just gonna bring it and put it into my downloads. And I'm gonna show you in a second why. All right, now let's go to Wildflower. Here's the PNG. I'm just gonna move it to my downloads. I already did it, so I'm just gonna replace the file, but that way you can see me walk through it and upload it into Design Space. Okay, now before we head out to Design Space, I'm gonna go, this is the font that I'm using today. It's called Alive, so for you to find it. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go into tools and go into font cloud. I, this is how I manage all my fonts, okay? So I'm gonna open up font cloud. Font cloud is free. You don't have to have a membership with them. You can have the free membership. There's, you know, there's a free membership and then there's paid membership. With the free membership, so you do need a login because that's how you'll access your font cloud. Um, I'm gonna go and I'm going to browse because I wanna add the font that I just did, right? So Sandia Mang Mang Mangon, or <laughs> however you wanna pronounce that. It is now in here. Why I like this is because, for instance, I'm gonna type out Charlotte, okay? These are all the fonts that I have in my font cloud. It is not all the fonts that I have on this desktop because like most, I'm sure most of you guys design on your laptop, sometimes on your desktop, sometimes at your friend's house. Sometimes your laptop dies and you have a brand new laptop with no fonts on there. So what I like about having a font cloud is that it doesn't really matter as long as I keep my font cloud account updated so I always upload a font that I've downloaded it will be here so if I am now on a brand new laptop I can go into font cloud I know I want to do a project with the name Charlotte and so I start scrolling and I like this font for instance I'm gonna click on it now I'm on my brand new laptop I just click download font. I don't need to go searching for it. I don't need to remember that it's called Bestie. I don't need to remember if I have, you know, rights to, to use it, you know, a commercial license for it. So I've just flat out switched over to Creative Fabrica for all my fonts. Now I don't have to worry about whether or not I can use it and not that I'm selling the actual font, but whether I can use that font in my cake topper and sell it or put it on a sweatshirt and sell it, whatever it is. I don't sell anything <laughs> like that, but if I ever wanted to, like you do maybe, I, I don't need to worry about it, right? So I know I can use it for commercial, uh, commercial usage and I have all my fonts here. Maybe I don't have it on this particular device, but I can easily find it and download it. And then that's it, okay? All right, so that's all I have for you for Font Cloud. Let's go into Design Space and let's do this project. All right, so I'm gonna open up the current, the, the actual project so that we have the actual dimensions of everything the way we, you know, and then we'll recreate it. So I'm gonna go to my stuff and it's right here. I'm gonna customize it. Now my font, like I mentioned, when I hit install and as long as my design space is closed out, when I open it up, it will now be available. So I'm just to prove my point, I'm gonna open up a text box, click on the font and go to system and it was called Sandia something, right? Yep, here it is. So I'm gonna click on that and it changes my font here. And there it is, and that's how easy it is to use it, okay? So I'm gonna delete that for now. Let's go and upload our image. So I'm going to delete this. Now let's go to upload it. So it looks like we're doing it from the beginning. I'm gonna to go to downloads, and here's my wildflower. Double click on it. And it's a large image. I'm gonna click on complex and continue. And apply and continue. I want the print and cut image. It's called wildflower. I'm going to upload it. And it's going to take a while. It's a big image. Um, okay, so we've got it. 
I'm going to click on it and add to canvas. And this will slow down a bit. It took me a while. Okay, so um, see, it hasn't updated the dimensions yet. So it, it's a large file, but it's so beautiful. Um, well, you saw it on here. The in Creative Fabrica when for this um, for this image, it was on a sweatshirt, which I think is also beautiful. So, all right. So now the size is uploaded. I'm going to see if I can click on it and just make it smaller. And I can't for the moment. It's still a little frozen, so it's okay. We're just gonna wait for it. Um, okay, there. Okay, so now it's a little bit more manageable. I'm just going to move it to the side. Okay, so let's bring in the shapes for our steak, right? So I'm going to go to shapes and um, I'm going to bring in two squares. One for the long stick and then the other one for the actual steak part, right? So I'm gonna unlock it because it's a square right now, but I wanna make it into a rectangle. So I want it four inches by three inches, and you can see it looks like it's the size of our steak, right? And then on this one, I'm gonna unlock it, and I want it to be three inches by 0.75, right? Yep. <laughs> All right, so here are our two images. Now, I don't want the word wildflower, so I'm good there. I'm gonna bring this to the front, um, arrange, bring to the front, and I'm gonna move this over. And I think I made this just a little bit bigger. I'm trying to duplicate what I did here, but I know I had some space here, which is okay, because when you look at the steak, the, this corner is actually indented, so there's nothing here. So I, you know, I'm okay with it like that. Um, I think I made this maybe even bigger. I might have made this even bigger than that but you kind of get the point, right? Okay, so now I have this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these two items and I'm gonna slice. I want just that rectangle. And the reason why I want that is because I want to center basil. I don't wanna just print this out and then try to figure it out later. So, um, I'm waiting for it to slice. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type out the word basil and we're gonna do the offset because it is busy and it's still, a, to me, I think it it's okay to have the little flowers in between because there's such a thick offset that you can read the word basil. All right, is this going to do this for me or what? Let's try to slice it again. It's a big image. Once we get this out of the way, we're gonna be good. <laughs> Um, all right, let's see if it will let us, okay, it'll let us move on. So let's go to text and I'm going to change it to alive. That's the one that I used. And I'm going to move everything. Oh, I think it finally sliced. Okay, so it finally sliced. Let's get rid of all the things we don't need. So I'm going to delete that and we don't need this. So now, let me see how close. Oh, really, really close, right? Okay, so here's this image. Oh my. Okay, so let's, I think this file just had so many layers and that's why it did that. Okay, and that's why it took so long. Okay, so we've got this, we've got the word basil. I'm gonna change basil into a blue, okay. Then I'm gonna do an offset. And I don't, oh my gosh. Let's delete that. So weird that it does that. Okay, got basil, let's do the offset. Um, I think I did like a 0 0.10, let's see what that looks like. No, maybe 0 0.15 I think. Okay, and I'm gonna apply. 
Okay, so my offset, I want it in white. Then I'm gonna grab these two and I'm just gonna group it together. I want it to move together as one. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna look at this. Do I like it about that size? And I think I do. And let's see, it's just slightly bigger than this one. So we can make this a little bit smaller. Oh my gosh, I think that's about the right size. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna now grab everything. I'm gonna grab the wildflowers, I'm grabbing the basil and the offset, and I wanna arrange it, or I'm sorry, align it. I don't wanna center it, so it's right in the middle. And then all I'm gonna do is grab this whole thing and I'm gonna flatten. So you can see it looks very similar to that. And now I can read the word basil. And if you want to do a thicker offset, you can. Let me undo this. Your other option is if you don't like all that middle stuff, you can go to your offset and you can contour and you can hide all. So now let's take a look at what this would look like. Then you don't have the flowers in between. Um, I would say for most projects, I do like this one more. But for some reason on this one, I just feel like with the wildflowers, you could still read basil, but it just feels like this was put in the middle of the wildflowers and it kept more of the that look and feel. But it's totally up to you. I wanna show you how to do that. All right, so now that we've got that, now I'm going to do the text and I'm gonna type planted 06-2023. Um, and we're just gonna make sure it fits in here. And I think that fits. Then all you need to do is flatten it. Let's see how close I got to it. Pretty close. It's a little bit on the smaller side, but not bad, right? So that's it. So now what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you go to make it. Now for me, because I'm sending this, I'm not printing it on my regular printer. I'm gonna print it on my sublimation printer because it's gonna go on a sublimation blank. So all that means is I'm gonna send it to my sublimation printer and not to my regular printer that I use for stickers, for instance. So, um, okay. So it's got my two basil and my tomatoes. Oh my gosh. Okay. And the words planted. Now, because I'm I'm going to just use scissors to cut this cuz I want that white all around. I'm just going to move this around just to make it easier for me to cut later, but I'm going to hit continue and send to printer. And when I send it to the printer, I'm not going to add bleed because the Cricut is not going to cut this for me. This is a simple shape. It's just a rectangle and the words and, and a little rectangle around the words. So I'm going to change this to my Sawgrass Print Manager. I'm not going to do bleed, okay, because I'm my Cricut's not cutting it. I don't need it to bleed. And then I'm going to hit print. That's all there is to it. So I hope that helps you kind of understand how to take a project, um, how to use images from somewhere else and make it all work together. Comments, questions, please post them. And I hope you enjoy the sublimation projects. I really like them. Um, it, it's You can't capture the, the, the details and the colors using anything else on here. And the fact that it becomes permanent. So once you heat it, it's embedded in the, in the blank and it's not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how you wash it, if it's out in the rain, whatever it is, it's going to stay on there. So I, I just feel like for crafting, like paper crafting, the next level is adding sublimation and just kind of keep adding to your craft. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye.